Good morning, everybody. From the uh, flat tire Dan compound uh, here on the Saturday morning prior to our first camping trip of the season. So this is the day, the weekend, we get everything ready and we, uh, we wake up our camper from a long winter's nap. Um, little change of plans. Uh, we have decided that we are going to use our dually, our F-350 to tow the camper. I know that I mentioned in a previous episode that we were gonna continue to tow that with our F-150 back there, but I've decided I wanna use the dually just cause I really love this truck. Um, so we're taking, you know, like fluids and tire pressures and that kind of stuff today. Um, we did go ahead and get um, a full size toolbox so that we can carry, you know, necessary tools along with us. We might need when we're out on the road. Um, but yeah, we got everything opened up. We got some water connected to the camper and, uh, and we're gonna get this baby ready to go out next weekend. Again, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Flat Tire Dan. Good to see everybody. Um, <clears throat> if you follow us on Instagram, flat underscore tire underscore Dan, and if you don't, you should. Uh, normally, you would notice that we would post prior to release of an episode, right? Night before, morning of, this is what we're doing, stay tuned kind of stuff. And you'll notice that we didn't do that for this episode because I really didn't intend on creating any content this weekend. Like, you know, like you saw, I'm busy getting the camper ready for getting away next weekend and the dually and I got some other stuff to do around the house and nothing, none of it particularly interesting, right? So I really wasn't planning on creating an episode this weekend. I was just going to take you with us next week. See you then, right? Um, when we go camping. But I follow a couple different Facebook groups, um, you know, camping specific, you know, um, whether they be Forest River specific or Toy Hauler specific. I find them useful, right? I find them useful, thought provoking, good discussion. Um... And I don't know if it didn't exist in the past or I'm just noticing it. Because remember, we had a camper before this. Um, there was a lot of discussion this week as, as you, know, as, you know, for those of us in the, in the north, as spring arrives and things get warmer and people start talking about getting their campers out. A lot of discussion on can I, how do I, should I dewinterize my own camper? Um, I don't even know if dewinterize is a word. But basically, winterization, for those of you who aren't campers, is, is the preparation that people do to store their campers for a long, cold winter here in the north. Basically, filling the plumbing systems with some type of antifreeze to keep them from freezing throughout the course of the winter, shutting some other systems down, that kind of stuff. And I'll get into that in a minute. But there was a lot of discussion about, can I undo that myself? Can I get my camper ready myself, you know, for, for the upcoming season? Now, one of two answers, pretty much, what I saw. Of course you can. Why would you ever pay anyone to work on your camper, right? I think a bit extreme. Or, no, you should never do anything to your camper yourself. You should always pay an RV tech because you paid a lot of money for that camper. Again, I think it's a little extreme. I think the truth falls in the middle somewhere there. Um, and for me, personalized, I do dewinterize my own camper. That being said, I don't winterize my own camper. I pay an RV tech to do that because there's this, a process as far as like blowing all the water out of the lines, filling the plumbing system, but not the water heater with antifreeze, all that kind of stuff needs to be done, needs to be done right. Um, and not that I don't feel comfortable doing it myself, but it's relatively reasonable, like 75, 80 bucks. And I take it to him to have some other stuff done at the end of every season anyway. I have him winterize it. I have him do my PA state inspection, which we need in Pennsylvania. And I also have him give it sort of his 100 point inspection of the entire camper, wheel bearings and brakes and roof and all that kind of stuff. So there's another set of eyes looking at my camper at least once a year. So that's what I do. I pay someone to winterize it, but I feel comfortable dewinterizing it myself. <clears throat> and I wonder, I thought I might do today. Now, I looked on YouTube to see if somebody's already done this, right? Created this exact episode. What I found is there was stuff on there about dewinterizing your own camper, but it either fell into like two categories I found. It was either very camper specific, like this is how you dewinterize this specific camper, right? Not this one, but whoever was talking, right? And I find that turns people off. Like if it's not their camper, they're not going to watch it. Or the other ones were very lengthy, very technically oriented, and, and people just like, after a couple of minutes, they just felt like their head was swimming, and way beyond that, right? At least that's the way it made me feel. And so I thought I would do a quick episode on how I dewinterize my own camper. And like I said, most campers are very similar. I mean, they're bigger and they're smaller, but the systems are similar, right? Kind of keep it simple, kind of walk you through the steps on what I do, 
right? And then watch it through to the end before you get into anything. And if you feel like it's something you're comfortable doing, it should apply to whatever type of camper you have. Um, I guess maybe before we get into how we do dewinterization, let me give you sort of a brief synopsis of how I see winterization. Winterization, like again, is done by my RV tech. Basically, they drain the plumbing systems. All the water comes out of the camper, right? In one way or another, using compressors and forced air and all kinds of stuff, which again, I don't want to do myself, right? They isolate the water heater system, right? They drain that. They leave that empty for the winter. They fill all the plumbing pipes with a specific RV antifreeze, right? All right, then we shut off the heaters and the propane and all that kind of stuff. Again, I'll get into all that. Um, but that's how I kind of see winterization. So dewinterization would be undoing all of that. And I want to walk you through how I do it, how it was explained to me. My RV tech told me a few years ago, this is certainly something I can do myself. I'm kind of handy, not crazy handy. I know RVs a little bit. And he felt comfortable telling me that it's something I'd certainly do myself. So let's walk you around, show you what I do. And again, wait, watch the whole episode. And at the end of the episode, if you feel like it's something that you can do yourself, um, again, I feel comfortable doing it myself and I've done it myself for a few years now. And it's always worked out great. So let's take a look at everything. Okay, two quick things uh, I should mention. I've already dewinterized my camper. Um, I did it earlier this week before I realized there might be a need for an episode like this. But I can still walk you through the process. It's pretty simple. Uh, second thing, am I concerned that it might get cold again, right? You know, it has a tendency to do that. No, not really. I've been looking at the long-term forecast. Looks like it's going to be okay. And I mean, it needs to get cold, cold and stay that way for pipes to start to freeze. But if I were concerned about it, fortunately for me, I've got my camper hooked up to shore power. So if it were to get like really cold overnight and I was worried about it, what I would do is I would just turn on my electric fireplace on low and let it run overnight so I'm not burning propane all night if I were concerned. Uh, but I'm not. I think we're past that. So, uh, winterization and dewinterization generally surrounds the plumbing systems, all right? So, sinks, vanities, showers, toilets. Now, some campers have more, some campers have less, but all pretty much the same. All very similar systems, right? Um, and then you have your water heater, all right? Usually, they hide it. Mine is hidden under the sink behind this decorative panel. How to house an easy way to find it if it's not marked? It's got an outside access panel to the mechanical working parts of the water heater. If you find that, which is easy to find, the water heater is directly inside the camper on the other side. That's how I located mine, all right? Took off this panel, there it is. Now, like I mentioned before, during winterization, they will fill the plumbing pipes with antifreeze, but they will isolate the water heater, drain it and leave it empty and not fill it with antifreeze. Well, how do they do that and how do I unisolate it? You have disconnect valves. At your cold, which is blue, hot, which is red, you have a valve in and out of your water heater. Now, mine are turned on because I've already dewinterized, but here's what they look like in the off position. All right? And they should both, you should, you should find them both off when you find your water heater to dewinterize. Again, I've already done it, so mine are already in the on position, but simple to find right there, not complicated to work. I know some people, once they start hearing about disconnect valves and stuff, they just kind of throw their hands up and say, I need to pay somebody. Not the case. Pretty simple. So I want to drain the antifreeze out of the plumbing pipes. First thing, best way to do that is open every fixture, right? All the faucets, open them up hot and cold because I want that system to breathe as I allow the antifreeze to drain out. Then I go around to the mechanical side of my camper and hopefully yours is marked. Mine came from Forest River marked. I love Forest River campers. Low point drains, all right? These are your plumbing drains at the lowest point of their piping, right? You open them up like a regular spigot and whatever's in them, antifreeze, water, will drain out, right? Now, having the spigots open will allow it to drain more efficiently and more thoroughly, right? Because it allows the system to breathe. Now, I will drain the antifreeze into a bucket. I just won't let it run on the ground. That's not very responsible behavior, all right? And then I will take that antifreeze and I will pour it into a milk jug. I've still got a little bit left in this one. And I will take it to the local automotive service center who will dispose of it for me for like five bucks, right? Once I've drained all the antifreeze out, I close those drains up. I'm connected to domestic water at my house through my pressure regulator and water filter. And I slowly turn the water on to re-energize the plumbing for the first time of the season. Slowly introduce water to my plumbing. 
I usually open this window up so I can hear the plumbing run. I hear the air coming out of the pipes. I hear the water start flowing into the sinks and I will let that flow for about a minute just to kind of thoroughly rinse any residual antifreeze and there's very little left in the pipes. I let that all just rinse out. Once I've done that, I'll go inside and I'll shut all those valves and now is when I start reintroducing my water heater to the system. Now, most of your water heaters have a drain plug on the bottom. It's also like an anode thing that stabilizes electrolysis or whatever. I don't really understand it. You could Google it, but it's basically the drain plug, which is on the bottom. So you'll want to thread that back in. Usually they just leave it sitting in the tray there for you. I usually put a little Teflon tape on mine. I thread it back in. It takes kind of an oversized socket. I think mine's like 17 millimeters. So I just did a little shopping beforehand to make sure I had it. It's not something you normally would keep in your toolbox. Um, and so I will put that plug back in. Now remember, the water heater is still isolated from the plumbing. There's no water running to it. And I will open the pressure release valve, which allows any overdue pressure to come out of the water heater. Now my water heater is full, so water will come out of there. When you open your empty water heater, nothing will come out, but it will allow the air to escape as you attempt to fill the water heater with water so you don't hydrolock or try and fill that container with air and water at the same time. So open that valve. Just pull the little lever towards you and it will be open. That's when we reintroduce water to the water heater. So we go back inside. Again, although campers are different, most of them have one water heater. Most of the spigots work the same. So it's all the same general principles. At this point is when I want to reintroduce water to my water heater. So I will start at the cold side. I will open that valve and I will hear it fill up. All right. Once it's kind of half full or so, I'll open the top side and let water kind of circulate through the water heater and the pipes and everything together. And then I will go back outside and once water starts flowing out that valve on the top, that pressure release valve, I will close it. Now the entire system's charged with water. All antifreeze gone, water everywhere. Now I want to make sure that that baby's still working, right? And so mine runs on propane. Now, most of the propane in your lines over the winter has dissipated. And you don't want to just go ahead and turn on your water heater or your heater with empty propane lines. Because it'll try and circulate and circulate and circulate to get it to fire up. And it's not very healthy for the systems within. So what I do is I purge through the stove. So before I started any of this, I turned the stove on. Just one random burner, right? I turned the stove on. And I waited till I smelled propane. And I fired it up. Now I know I've got live propane at least pretty close to the water heater. So then at that point is when I go over, I've got water in the water heater, I got water in the pipes, all the valves are turned off. I will go over here, making sure the propane's on obviously, and I will turn on my water heater switch. And I will allow the water heater to fire up, circulate, run until it shuts off on its own, which means that it's full of hot water. And then I will drain that hot water through all the fixtures. I will let that hot water run out completely empty the water heater one time. A, because I want warm water running through all these pipes at least once. And B, I want to make sure that it kicks on naturally on its own again, that it's working, that it's doing everything that it's supposed to do. Once that happens, I'm pretty much done. I put this panel back on, I responsibly dispose of the antifreeze, and at least plumbing wise, I'm ready to go. All right. Um, I will usually pour a little sewer treatment again into the toilet, you know, stuff like that. But as far as plumbing is concerned, that's pretty much it. Now, throughout the course of the winter, I've been running the heater every now and then. I've been trying lights. I've been doing all that. So I'm pretty good at this point. Now it's just cleaning time. Inside and out, I give the camper a good thorough cleaning. I check tire pressures, all that kind of stuff. And next week we'll be ready to go. So hopefully that kept it simple for you. And to show you that it's not all that involved, and even regardless of the size of your camper, it's usually pretty much the same process. Okay, so hopefully that kind of showed you guys that the dewinterization process is relatively simple, regardless of what type of camper you have. Some campers have like a, a on-demand, full-time recirculating hot water system. Basically, just cut out everything you heard me talk about the water heater, same process draining the antifreeze out, filling the plumbing system slowly, carefully, allowing air to purge, and then testing all your systems when you're done. Um, and then other than that, like I said, it's tire pressures, making sure all your lights work, all that kind of stuff, like simple stuff, like kind of you would do with your car if you hadn't driven it in a while. Um, 
But in my opinion, winterization, I certainly want to pay someone to do. But dewinterization, I feel comfortable if, I, if I've gone out and shopped for a socket, you know, before we got started for the, for the drain plug on the hot water here. It's something I can do myself. Um, and then what I try and do is driveway camp at least one night. Try everything. That way, when I get out to the campground next weekend, I know I'm good to go. So hopefully that was helpful for everybody. Um, I don't know if I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Facebook, but I've had some requests. I keep saying that if you want me to interact as far as pictures and more specific questions than I can get in the YouTube comments that you'd have to, we'd have to connect on Instagram and somebody pointed out to me the other day why I could start a Facebook page for the channel can do the same thing there. And you know what? That is accurate. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start a Facebook page for the channel. If you see an invite from me or, um, or whatever, I'll update you on. I think it's just going to be flat tire day. I want to make sure it's not taken. I'm pretty sure it's not taken, but over the next week or so, I'm going to start uh, a Facebook page and you'll be able to follow us there as well. And anything I post on Instagram, I'll post on Facebook. Um, I think that's it again next weekend. We're going to be heading out camping. I'm uh, going to be taking you with us, going to be going to visit some, uh, some pretty cool Pennsylvania history. And I think um, everybody I talk to will always mention how much they enjoy the history of the area that we live in. So I think you'll find it interesting. So stay tuned for that. Um, as always, really grateful for everybody who's been tuning in. Really appreciate it. If you're enjoying the content, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It does help us reach more viewers. And uh, remember, stay tuned for more content from... That tired Dan. We'll see you.